Shalom sense greetings this evening as we are streaming on this subject on the book of Philippines. We are going to be studying the book of Philippines. We visited that place and I'll be so showing you the prison where Paul and Silas were when the earthquake happened and the power of God delivered them. And also I had testimonies in that place. And later in the night, maybe we'll stream with you also the Regents Park um, all night prayer meeting that I'll be preaching in South Africa. Then Saturday, I'll be with the youths in Pretoria in the youth meeting and I'll release my animation on um, the dangers, avoiding the dangers in crossing the bridge from Singu to Merit. There's an animation that I've done on that one, so it's going to be interesting. So then on Sunday we have the Yovel Revival. Now let's go to the book of Philippines. Then it's a, it is Paul's letter of joy. He writes in joy, though he's in prison. He encourages them that um, we can do everything through Christ that strengthens him. So we left Thessalonica to go to, to Philippi. This is called the Kavala. The modern student play that video so that you can hear about Kavala. Mm -hmm. 16 k's from here the hotels are good and cheap in this area find very cheap ones that are affordable and if you want the glass ones also you find them this is the place uh, beautiful this is the port right philippi this was 200 something k k's two hours something from thessalonica we came by bus because there's no flights easily to this place so we came by bus and the place that I was interested in seeing is this place, the prison where Paul and Salas were. Right in the Philippines. And there was an earthquake. The earthquake at the prison opened. The Philippine jailer said, What shall I do to be said? So this is the prison. Where is the end here? That's it. Let me see the place. Wow, this is nice. This is the prison where when they praise God, God came down the earthquake, earthquake and the doors opened. The Philippian jailer said, What shall I do to be served? You are served him and his house. They were not called Jews and don't they believed in the Lord. And him uh, and the house was saved. This is the place where it happened. We are in Philippi. Philip, I'm seeing the nice place in the um, the archaeological center where there are excavations of the marketplace and the arches that are preserved. But this is the prison where Paul and Silas were. Nice. Paul was a prisoner for Christ. He was always going with the gospel of Christ. And when he was in prison in Rome, he wrote to the Philippines. In Philippines. He wrote four letters there in, to Ephesians, to Philippines, and um, to Colossians, and to Philemon. So during the two years in Rome prison, that's when he wrote this. So the outline of the letter of the Philippines is showing about joy. It's Paul's letter of joy. Joy in living for Christ. Joy in serving Christ in unity, joy in knowing Christ, joy in resting in Christ. This was the archaeological uh, museum. So he says to the Philippians, for me to live, I know it's Christ for me to die. He's saying uh, he's caught between whether dying or, 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 or living because he was in prison and it was a Roman prison. And being in a Roman prison was something that was serious because it was under a serious, serious empire that, that would kill. So Paul was confident that he's going to come out, and, but he's saying, anyway, if I die, it still is Christ. So he says, I'm caught up between. And the saints in the Philippi there, they were serious and they had to send a helper to help Paul. So here we're driving oh, in the bus, leaving Thessalonica, coming to the Philippi. The, then in verse 1, now it says, to all the saints, it says, Paul and Timothy. Uh, servants of Christ Jesus. 
You see, it's very different to write. He's writing to friends. He doesn't say Paul an apostle of Christ. He's saying Paul, like he's just passionate to say Paul, you know. Um, like if I'm talking to you, I don't even say pastor, I'm going to say more. He's saying hi, saints, you know. He's, he's not even putting a high risk to the friends. To all the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with overseers and deacons, grace and peace to, to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, is that this service be with us, anoint us, bless your saints, Father, as they shall be logging in and feeding on the word, on the carcass, where the a carcass is, the equals God. May you open the word, Lord Father, feed us with the bread of heaven and answer all our needs and our desires in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, he says in verse 4, um, uh, always in every prayer of mine, I make mention of you. Uh, uh, requesting with joy is writing about joy the philippians were persecuted you know the philippi is named under king philip II, who is the father of alexander the great so this is a, a very busy archaeological place is actually um, a very busy tourist area in verse 5 he says um for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now he's always praying for them it's good for to pray for the sheep and the sheep to pray for for the pastors verse 6 he says being confident of this very thing that he that has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of christ when god starts something he finishes it he serves you does a half saved when he heals you does make you half healed when he delivers you does make you half delivered so you you will finish the work that he started he says i pray this that your love may again increase and abound in knowledge and in all spiritual understanding. In this whole book, he doesn't even quote the Old Testament. He's just exhorting them. He's just telling them. Here I was actually by the prison of St. Paul and um, uh, speaking about the word of God. Let me just play that one. That's when he writes, When Paul was in prison, he was not shaken. He believed in the power of God to deliver, and God delivered him. So let's go. As I'll be giving the sermon here on the book of F of Philippians, right in the land where it happened, we're going to continue the book of Philippians. I'm going to give you a detailed sermon that I did in this place on the book of Philippians. Get into the prison. Let's get to the prison of Apostle. Oh, there is the prison you can see it behind me right let's go where we, we are in the prison of saint paul right. in the philippines i'm going in, in verse 10 he says that you may prove all things uh, that you may approve things that are excellent that you may be sincere without offense until the day of christ so this is where the basilica was uh, maybe let me play this one or rewind a bit, get to the start. This is where the basilica, the church built in memory of Paul. Okay. And it has nice pillars preserved and uh, the structures that we still have. And the p prison of St. Paul is down there. And um, I was hearing that there is a pillar with the name of St. Paul somewhere down there. They are only the marketplace where some, someone built and put the uh, name of Paul You see the structures. I heard that this is the mountain of gods or something like that. This is beautiful. That is the basilica. Right. Let me go to Philippians 1 verse 11. It says, um, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. He wanted the church to have fruit. He wanted the church to have the results. When you are in Christ, there must be fruits. When you are taught of the word, there must be, you must bear the fruits of the word. So in verse 12, he says, um, but I would, but I would, you should understand, brethren, that the things which has happened unto me, you have fallen rather for the fairness of the gospel. He's in prison, but he's saying, look, even if I'm under a Roman prison, it has become for the fairness of the gospel because people started becoming bold when they saw Paul suffering for the gospel. Because our suffering 
is joining with the suffering of Christ. If we suffer with him, we shall reign with him. So it made many other believers and Christians bold to say we can give our lives to amplify the story of the life of Christ's sacrifice. So it became for the furtherance of the gospel, meaning that even whatever happens in our life, becomes for good. God turns the circumstances that are meant to destroy you, that are meant to pull you down. He turns them to be for your good. All things work together for the good. So he says in the verse uh, 13 um, that there are some who preach Christ out of envy and strife. Some also out of goodwill. One preaches Christ out of contention, not sincerely supposing to add to my afflictions um, to my bones, but others out of love, knowing that I'm set for the defense of the gospel. So he's saying preachers can preach out of contention. Someone can preach a powerful service, but out of bitterness, out of contention. But he says whether it's contention or what, I rejoice therein. So this is the archaeological site with the excavation. Let me play this video at the theater. Theater built by Philip II, King Philip II, which century long back. This is a 2000 seater theater. I see the nice arch there, and there's the mountain, mountain of, what is Pangeo. Okay, God. <laughs> okay. The God of Dionysus, Bacchus. Okay, it was full of gold, and they would mine the gold, <laughs> and the theater was a two thousand, more than 2,000 in the time of the Romans, and there was, there was uh, some barriers here that they put. Mm -hmm. to stop um to protect the audience mm -hmm. i hear that there was an arena of the the lions let's see this one mm -hmm. so we see three levels the level with the gladiator and the lion mm -hmm. is the level we start where we stand for okay and the lion is lower than this level so a guard okay. tries to push the lion into this cage that is a lift cage a manual lift cage okay so it comes up in the center of the orchestra in that area over there where that slab with the holes is, right, is so the lion is coming up in this spectacular way in mm. the center of the orchestra and thousands of people were yelling and so the battle was starting Okay. So uh, instead of people coming here and feel mercy, because for ancient Greek time we say that people were coming here for theater and feel mercy, okay. people were didn't feel mercy at all. Okay. <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. Let me and see. that's why in Christian period the theater was abandoned, because the Christians didn't want to have any connection with that place that was an arena. Okay. Um, right. This theater that we visited, the arena where they would meet there. Um, so now in verse 18 of chapter 1 says, What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or, or in truth, Christ is preached and I rejoice therein. So whether they are preaching pretense, Paul is saying, I rejoice whenever the gospel is preached. Um, in, 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 he says, for me to live is Christ, for me to die is gain. He's comforting the Philippians because they were worried now about what shall happen to him in prison, the Roman prison, whether he's going to die, whether he's going to live. But he's saying, either way, for me to live is Christ. If I live, if I come out of the prison, we're going to preach the gospel. If I die, it's also gain. He says, but if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet, what shall I choose? I would not. He says, I don't know. Whatever will happen in prison here, God will decide. But we know that he actually came back in uh, chapter 20 of the book of Acts, back to the Philippines, back to Macedonia, because this is in Macedonia. This is the place actually in Philippi where he actually met Lydia, the seller of people. We shall see it later when I show you the video of the place where he met Lydia, the seller of people, one of the first converts. The Philippian jailer became another convert and his house coming to the power of God. What makes us win souls is when they see the power of God, not just arguments, when the supernatural is made known, it is a soul winning tool. People don't want to follow a powerless religion. In verse 23 it says, uh, for uh, I'm in a straight between the two, be having a desire to depart, that is to die, uh, and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. He's saying, I would have just wanted to go with, to be with the Lord, but to abide in the flesh is more needful. 
Leave us, we have a purpose. We don't want to go to heaven before that purpose is fulfilled. There is no gain in us just going to the sixth dimension and waiting and enjoying in the Lord. Because this man Paul had already been, he has seen things happening. He says, I know a man 14 years ago, which was in, in um, Acts chapter 14, before this, Acts chapter 16. He was taken to paradise when they stoned him and left him for dead. That is because Acts chapter 14 is uh, 14 years ago. Um, away from Second Corinthians chapter 12 where he says uh, he was taken to the third heaven so he says nevertheless to abide in the flesh is more needful for you and having this confidence um, I know I shall abide and continue with you for the furtherance of joy and faith it's a letter of joy so he's in prison and he knows that he say anything can happen with a Roman prison but he says, I have confidence that I'm coming out of this situation. This is how a Christian must be in any situation. You must have confidence that you are coming out. Even if no one has come out of that situation, you must have that confidence in Christ that you can come out of that situation. He says, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by coming to you again. And God fulfilled it because in chapter 20, he actually came again. And he says, let your conversation be as become the gospel of Christ. He's saying, let your life be worthy of the gospel. This is actually the place where he met Lydia, the seller of people. And this church is built in the spot where he met Lydia, the seller of people. We're going to see more of it later. He says, let your conversation be as becoming the gospel of Christ. That whether I come to see you or I'm absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand in one spirit, in one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. He didn't want to say people do well when the pastor is there. Even when the pastor is gone, he has traveled. Let people be united. Let people be one mind and pray together and live a life worth of the gospel. He says, for unto you it is given on the behalf of Christ, not only to believe him, but to also suffer for his sake. So as Christians, we are partakers of the suffering of Christ. A, a Christian must deny himself and take his cross. All of us have a cross to bear. All of us have a part in the sufferings of Christ, which also gives us a part in the glory of Christ. This is the Agora, this is the marketplace in the where they used to have uh, their shops and things there. Philippians 2, Philippians is just four chapters of so chapter 2 now, verse 2, it says, Fulfill you my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being in one accord and one mind. That is the joy of any pastor. That is the joy of any true leader. People united, one mind. We don't want to see divisions and church politics. But we want people to be one minded. That's what brought the Holy Ghost down when they were in one mind and one accord. Don't allow any cancer of gossip and the, uh, the rumor mill in the church where things are happening and uh, it's a cancer in the church. He says, let nothing be done through strife and vain glory. There I was holding the sign written Paul's prison. Um, but in lowness of mind, let each one esteem the other better than themselves. This is not common these days where you prefer your brother, you prefer your sister, because that is the mind that was in Christ. It's looking not each man to his own things, but every man also to the things of others. That is real perfect love, that one. Without perfect love, no one can make it. Let this mind be in you which also was in Christ. So that was the mind which was in Christ. Where you prefer, you, you are sacrificial, you are a servant, you serve, you are a child of God, you express the nature of Christ, partakers of the divine nature of Christ. It says, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now in chapter 2, Paul brought the central revelation of the whole book of Philippians. All other things are linked to that revelation. We suffer for him because of this revelation that uh, every knee shall bow and every power in heaven is in Christ is the principal theme uh, he says now but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant that's why he's saying we should do likewise that is the mind that was in Christ so we think through the mind of Christ so we are transformed by the renewing of the mind and having the mind of Christ so he, he thought it not robbery but uh, he took upon him the form of a se se servant and was made in likeness of flesh of man that is Christ says being found in the fashion of man he humbled himself 
and became obedient even unto death, even death of the cross. That's why Paul even say he is not even afraid of death also, because everything to him is Christ. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee should bow. I want you to see the triple characterization of the universe. It says every knee should bow of the things in heaven, one, things in earth, two, and things under the earth. Every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord for the glory of the Father. This is exactly how it's written in Revelation. There was no man in heaven and under the earth who was worthy, but only Christ. So every Things shall bow. All spirits, all powers, everything will bow under the name of Jesus Christ. We have a powerful name. There is no other name where we can be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. That is the most powerful name above all thrones and powers. Wherefore, my beloved, as you always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now more in my absence, wake out. You see, he's writing to friends. He says, my beloved, even when I was not there, you were obedient. Even when I was there, he's not even wanting you to rebuke much. He's showing them the way that, no, this is the way to go. Wake out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, we must not get used to church. We must always wake our salvation with fear and trembling. Even Paul will show you later that he doesn't count himself as someone who has also reached. But he says, I forget things that are past and I press to the mark of the eye calling. He says, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. If you see yourself wanting to do something for God, it's God who is doing, who is giving you that desire. If you, want, if you see yourself wanting to repent and make right, it's not your nature, it's the nature of God working in you, making you to desire and to do his pleasure. Do all things without memories and disputings. When you do something for the Lord, do it with the happiness and uh, not as men pleaser but as unto the lord he says in a few you, you may be blameless and harmless the sons of god without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights so we are in a dark world but we are shining in that world by the character of christ by the nature of christ holding forth the word of of life uh, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither leopard in vain. So he is confident that these people will make the great. Yet I suppose it is necessary to send you a perfect task. Let, let me play this one a bit. You examine the structures, broken pillars. There is no continuing civilization except the word of God. All these great kingdoms are now ruins. But there is going to be an establishment of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. When God is in our hearts, he that started a good work will finish it. That is the only eternal thing. All other things will pass away. Great kingdoms of Alexander the Great, they passed away. Philip II is the father of Alexander. And uh, this place was also great to Caesar, to Alexander, and to the Apostle Paul. Here it is, the marketplace, ancient civilizations, but the highest civilization is a civilization of faith, where all things are possible, where through the word of God we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. We're seeing wonderful pillars, we're seeing the nice marketplace, and there is that structure. I want to go and zoom into that one. We learn from the book of Philippians that God supplies all our needs. He says here, but let me zoom there. But unto my God, but my God shall supply your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ. God is able to supply all our needs. Now, it says, um, I found it necessary. Paul was telling them that he would have sent Timothy. Timothy was a but he was trained. He was a, a trained under Paul, trained in the message of the hour under Paul. But he says, now I will send to you Epaphroditus. Epaphroditus was from the Philippines. He was sent to help Paul when he was in prison 
until he became sick, he almost died. Epaphroditus. And Paul is explaining what happened to Epaphroditus because he was giving himself to help Apostle Paul. Until he almost died there, he says, Epaphroditus, my, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger, that he ministered to my wants. He was there to minister to the needs of Paul. You know, sometimes people forget about the ministers. They say ministers are ministers, but they also need to be ministered to. Um, he longed um, for, uh, after you all and was full of heaviness because that you heard that he was sick. So the church heard that Epaphroditus was, uh, was sick and they were heavy because of that. And um, for indeed, he was sick nigh unto death. But God yet mercy on him, not on him only, but also on me, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. The healing of one of the sheep is also the healing of the church. Because we don't want sorrow after sorrow, bad news after bad news. So Paul is saying this healing of Epaphroditus was also for him, so that he doesn't have sorrow. I sent him, therefore, um, the more careful that when you see him again you may rejoice that i may be less sorrowful when they saw him coming again they saw this man was sick he almost died so god is powerful you know that testimony that when you see someone was you had a prayer request that sister so and so is in the hospital then when you see them coming to sing a special when you hear a request that brother so and so is down sick in, in the hospital bed when you see him coming to say hallelujah again in church it brings joy to the church when you see God in our midst. So he says, receive him therefore in the Lord uh, with all greatness and all such in reputation. He says, we, these people must say, we have high reputation because he was sacrificing. Let me read this scripture again. Um, play it there. Okay. Maybe I skip something. Go Let's ahead. move. As we examine the structures broken pillars all right uh, there is no it says receive him with gladness uh, because for the work of christ he was nigh unto death not regarding his life to supply your your lack of service towards me because those people were far and paul was in prison but epaphrod says to supply what other saints could not do he took it upon himself. Sometimes you see hard-working ministers almost breaking down in health just to supply to the saints what is needed. Ministry is full of sacrifice. If you don't sacrifice, you don't have the revelation of Christ. Now let's go to chapter 3 of the Philippians. Chapter 3, what is happening? Those people again, the Jews, were bringing persecution again. They started wanting people to be circumcised. And Paul was saying, no, circumcision, we, we, we are not in the flesh, we are now in the spirit. And then they were reminding Paul of his past when he tried to show the revelation. They were saying, remember, you persecuted the church. That's why Paul comes to say, no, 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 we're not under this natural circumcision. Uh, but anyway, when you are reminding me my past, I tell you this, forgetting the things that are past, I press to the mark of the eye calling. When the devil reminds you of your past, show him his future in the local fire there. Finally, brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same thing to you is needful. It's not grievous, but so that you are safe. Beware of dogs. This is one scripture that is, he did not explain. He just says, beware of dogs. <laughs> beware of evil workers. Beware of concession. So there were evil workers who were coming. He says, some were bringing Christ out of condition. Some were just bringing the law and bondage again. Um, so they were coming to disturb the work. And he says, beware of dogs. This is usually in the gates of people, but now here is a scripture saying, beware of dogs. In church, beware of dogs. Uh, he says, for we are the circumcision. We worship God in spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus. You have no confidence in the flesh. He says, don't go back to the flesh. Circumcision is now of the heart, not of the flesh. He says, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, in if any other man thinketh that he is there for he might trust in the flesh, it's me. He says, if there is someone who could have boasted in the flesh, he says, it's him because he was circumcised on the eighth day. He was of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. 
as touching the law, a Pharisee was very strict. So coming to the flesh, he says, no, you cannot post above me. So in, in concerning his zeal, I was persecuting the church, touching righteousness, which is the law, and I was blameless in the law. Uh, but all those things, but what things were gained to me, those I counted as lost to Christ. Here I was walking to the place where Lydia met Paul. It is 20 minutes walk from the uh, jail of Paul there. So he says, now, ye doubtless, I count all things but loss um, for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do not count them but dung, and do count them dung, that I may win in Christ. That's why the songwriter says, forbid not, not that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my Lord. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice to the Lord. He says, I count everything as, as dung. He says, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. He's answering back those who are saying, go back to circumcision, go back to, to these do's and don'ts and laws without the spirit of Christ. He says, but uh, not my own righteousness, which is of the law, but which is through Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. If by any means I might attend to the resurrection of, of the dead, he says, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. I think that's the best before, but it didn't show there. Though, not as though I've already attained, neither already perfect, but I follow after that I may apprehend that which also I'm apprehended for. Let me hear what this man is saying. And I press to the mark of high calling. So we must all press. There's a high calling, there's a great goal, there's a higher plane, there's a greater life, there's a richer level of Christianity, there's a higher level in prayer that we can reach when we come to Christ. This is a beautiful place. Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter what your dark background was. When you come to Christ, you aim for perfection. God who started a good work will finish it, will perfect you in Christ, building into the stage of a perfect man. This is a wonderful trip. And I believe you are being blessed by walking in the Bible land. It's one market statement that Paul makes in this place. He says, brethren, I don't count myself as one who has apprehended. But this one thing I do, I forget the things that have passed and I press to the mark of the high calling. Right. So he says, must... in verse 18, he says, brethren, I don't count myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are, uh, are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before a christian must not be beheld in their past whatever happened in the past let it be under the blood of jesus christ even past victories you cannot always be in them there are new victories there's a race i must run there are victories to be won keep me true lord jesus i press to the mark of the uh, for the prize of the high calling of god in christ so there's a high calling God is calling us to come up higher. There's a higher life. There's a level in the spirit, a level in the supernatural, a level in things of God that you can reach by climbing high into God, high in faith. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. If anything be otherwise minded, God shall reveal uh, this unto you. You see, some of these pillars have the name of Paul actually. You can see the inscription of the name of Paul in those pillars. He says in verse 17, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them that walk so as ye have asked for an example. We must be an example. You must be an epistle. You must be a, a Bible that someone will read. He says, For many walk whom I have told you often, now I tell you even tears, weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. There are kinds of believers in the church. These are people in the church, but they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation um, is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, 
the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we have a citizenship of heaven. You know, this place of Philippines was under Roman Empire. It meant if you were in Philip, you were also a Roman. That's why Paul says, uh, we are Romans, they have beaten us. In the, if you were in Philip, you were also having Roman citizenship. So he's bringing that also to say, we also have a, Roman, a heavenly citizenship. Even if you are here, yeah, they were not in Rome as such, but they were under a colony of Rome. So we are also colonized our life by the power of Christ. He has taken over in our lives in a nice sweet colonization where the flesh is under bondage and so we have citizenship of where we are colonized from and we belong to heaven he says we shall change christ shall change our vile body that we may be fashioned unto his glorious body according to the working thereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself this is when christ takes over and subdues everything and everything is restored in christ I was walking from that prison, going to 20 minutes to where um, Paul met Lydia. This is in a written in Acts chapter 16, where there was a certain woman called Lydia. She was a seller of people of the city of Thyatira, who worshipped God, and the Lord opened it to give heed to the things spoken by Paul. For you to understand the message, it means God has opened your heart. And for you to sacrifice, support the ministry, spiritual, financial, uh, ministry needs a lot of things to move. It's when God has opened your heart. Now I was working here. Let me just give that video then. 20 minutes walk from the archaeological site to the place where Lydia met Paul. Paul met Lydia, the seller of people, in this place. So we're coming all the way from the back there. It's a 20 minute walk just for exercise to the place where Paul met Lydia, the seller of people. Right. Let's I'm go. taking a 20 minute walk from the archaeological site. So, this is um, in the next clip there. This is the place. Let me play this one. Archaeological okay. excavation in some killer. met Lydia, she was by side, she was a seller of people from the Atira. This is a very beautiful place. Right. That was where Paul, this is the place where Paul met Lydia, the seller of people. Let me go to the next clip and show you something. Um, this is the church built in the place where Paul met Lydia, the seller of people. This is the church of it. Um, let me just play it. Και όλου του κόσμου όλων των εθνών. Ιδιαίτερος λοιπόν σήμερα που είμαι θα εδώ. Θέλω να ευχαριστήσω. All right. Let me read the scripture. We are now in chapter four, which is the last chapter. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, he is writing friends, uh, and longed for. He was longing to see them. This is not a book of, corre of correction like the Corinthian one. So he says, my joy and crown. He's talking about joy. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. He's writing to the church that is loving. Actually, there's not too much rebuke. There is showing the way of the Lord. He says, I beseech um, you, dears, and uh, sign children. These are sisters, I think. These are names of sisters. That they be of the same mind in the Lord. I think they are sisters. Anyway, many times it's easier for sisters to be not of the same mind than for brothers <laughs> in churches. <laughs> sisters, you must unite. You must love one another. And he's saying that they be same mind. Um, and I entreat also the true York fellow. Help those women which leopard with me in the gospel. So there are women who are called to help in the ministry. Some are serious. Some are actually sacrificing even spiritual and financial. Some are sacrificing uh, even in helping little children, helping little girls. And Clement also, which is my fellow leopard, whose names are in the book of life. 
Paul is seeing the names of these people in the book of life. Remember Paul went to the third heaven and he saw things that it was not lawful for a man to utter. This is before this, this is Acts chapter 14. So he's, he's actually confident that I saw you there, like when the prophet went beyond the cattle of time. Then he says, I saw some of you there. So he is saying, these people's names are in the book of life. What makes them labor for the gospel? It's because something happened is operating in their lives. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Now, this is someone in prison. This is someone suffering. This is someone who, with epaphroditus who is almost dying. This is someone who is in pain in prison. And he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. There is no situation that can arrest your joy. When they were in prison, they, they, they started singing and praising God with him. Paul and Silas, it was Paul and Silas when they were in Philippi there. They started praising God. Chains could not arrest their, their joy. So he says, let your compass, the moderation be made known of all men. Be moderate. The Lord is at hand. In all his episodes, he's showing that the coming of the Lord is at hand. This is the beautiful inside of that church. There was a service, that's why there was a bit of noise there. So he's showing Paul and Lydia. He says, now, one of my favorite scriptures it says, be careful of nothing, but in everything, in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we always forget that thanksgiving part. It says, in all things, don't be careful of anything, but in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, when you are coming to God, thank Him, even before it happens, you are prophesying your victory. Let your request be made known unto God. So in whatever you are passing through, the how question, how it's going to come up, it's not yours. You just be careful of nothing, but through prayer and supplication, you make your request made known unto God. God is a strategist. You make it happen in a way that you don't understand. It says the peace of God, which passes all understanding. It's hard to even understand the peace that we have, even in hardest times. Um, shall keep your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Someone is in prison and is writing that. He is not saying think about prison and other things and uh, think about the circumstances, think about people to sympathize on you. He says, no, think of these things. Your mind must not be on negative things. Your confession must be positive all the time. This is the beautiful church where Paul met Lydia. It was built in the site. So those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And God of peace shall be with you. This is a true leader. He's leading by example. He says, what you have heard, what you have seen me doing, do. He's, do, he's not saying like, don't, don't do as I do, but do as I preach. He says, no, um, what you have seen me doing. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly. This is a man in prison rejoicing. Like that. We should learn something there. I rejoice in the Lord greatly. Now, at the last, your care of me has flourished again. Wherein you are also careful, but you lacked opportunity. He's saying, no, I know you are caring for me, but there was no chance. But now I'm rejoicing. Now, not that I speak in respect of want. Many times when we mention something that we must sacrifice, people think that pastor wants something. When we say you must pay your tithes and offering, people think that we want something. He's saying, no. I'm rejoicing that you are also caring for me. But he says, not because I want something. For I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. He's saying, I've learned that in whatever state I am, I'll be content. Let me hear what he's saying. Yes, you won't leave it. Yes, you won't leave it. Just without finishing it. One of my favorite scriptures there. It's in Philippians 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You can see the wonderful work that is being done here in archaeology as they are excavating. Now, get to this. Let me get to this scripture. Paul says, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound 
everywhere in all things i am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to be abound and to suffer need paul had seen riches and poverty he was he saw the power of god providing he was not a, a soft christian he had a four-wheel drive in life when things were tough you move yet he worked with his hands he did not rob anyone he was a minister who was an example to us he says i did not take anything from you he was preaching the gospel he says for me to live i know it's christ for me to die it's gay now let me read verse 12 Thanks, because Mr. that one is in the right let me go to verse 13. i can do all things through christ that strengthens me this is the beautiful church there maybe you can play that one this is the beautiful church the the service there he say i can do all things through christ this is the mindset that brings results in our life you are omnipotent if you're a child of god there is nothing that you can fail to do if christ is in you then you have the hope of glory hope of victory hope of healing hope of delivery hope of everything he says notwithstanding you have well done that he did communicate with my affliction when he was in affliction they were praying for him they were bearing with him now ye philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when i departed from macedonia no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving but only you this is a principle if you are a christian there's giving and receiving but you must be more givers blessed is the end that gives than the one that takes so even in thessalonica you send once again to my necessity so these were friends to paul even when he was in thessalonica you know you'll be expecting the thessalonians to be helping but the, those who are far were now helping paul that's why he says even those of Peria were more noble than those of thessalonica he says not because i desire a gift but i desire fruit that may abound to your account he's saying when you do that it's for your account when pastors preach on you have not heard me much talking about tithes and offering but we rob people there even the prophet wanted to return the money of um, sister Haiti. god says no it's to your account that may abound to your account and that that is very crucial that is very necessary that you do as the spirit needs and cover because god says try me and see if i will not open the windows of heaven let me go to verse 18 as i'm about to finish we are finishing now my, my time is already gone but i have all and i and abound paul is actually boldly saying even when he's in prison that i don't i have everything and i'm abound i'm full having received of, of epaphroditus the things which were sent from you an odor of sweet smell Brothers, even perfume is necessary for a brother, you know, roll on and, and um, deodorant. He says, when he was in prison, he, he brought those things. A sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing unto God. Actually, here is also commenting that the life of the believer was the order of sweet smell, not just what he was carrying. He's saying his service also was an order. So, he says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory god is rich every cat in a thousand hills belongs to him so he will supply when he supplies he's your child he knows your needs and the pays back there's a payback time for every sacrifice that you make for the gospel one day there'll be a payback time now uh unto god and our father be glory forever and ever amen um salute every saint in christ jesus the brethren which are with me greet you um all saints they, they go back to that one there was just by eating breakfast and i was seeing the city of philip by the hotel the, the nice view there all saints salute you chiefly that are it's of caesar's household the grace of our lord christ be with you amen no, every book was ending with, I mean, only the book of Acts, you know, because it's continuing, we are a continuation of the book of Acts. So, Paul was a great servant of God, and the prophet comments that 
Paul, his minister, his way of ministering was an example for all future messengers to aspire to. And uh, uh, though you may not reach such heights, but his ministry had threefold quality. First, he was true and never deviated, no matter what he was true to the word of God. He says, though we or an angel speak anything different, we are cursed. He was staying with the word of God, he did not deviate to left or right. Secondly, his ministry was with power and demonstration. He says, our word, our gospel was not in word only, but in power and demonstration. Thirdly, he had fruits of the ministry. He had the Timothy's and Paul's. So ministry must be fruitful. He was Paul, a prisoner for Christ. He leopard for the gospel. Now, as I'm closing now, I want you to hear this. Um, this book of Philippians is showing the love. It's showing joy in the Lord. You cannot be in Christianity and be, uh, have no joy. Christianity is joy. Whether you have money or no money, it's joy from inside. It comes as a resource inside. When you are in Christ, you know how to abound, whether you have money or, you, or to, be, to have nothing. It's still Christ. For me to live is Christ. For me to die is Christ. Everything around us is Christ. So we must bear the sufferings of Christ. When we are suffering, let's rejoice in the Lord always. And again we say rejoice. And it shows that God will supply every need. You cannot be needy and God fail to supply. Everything that we need, God will supply. My prayer today is that whatever request that you have, God will supply that re request according to his riches in glory. In, in other words, the account in heaven is enough to supply all our needs. The, every need that we have, there's enough supply in heaven. God will rather bankrupt heaven than for you to fail to get your desire. So I'll just pray now as we close. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we have learned in the study, Lord, in the book of Philippines, Lord Father, that everything centers around you. We need that Christ-centered life, Lord Father. Until, Lord Father, we know that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. There is no name in heaven or earth or under the earth that is bigger than the name of Jesus Christ. So we use that name, Father, to bring, Lord Father, to subjection every power of the enemy under our feet. Father, may you rule and govern in our affairs, in our lives, and make us have that citizenship to the other side. I pray, Father, that if there be any breaks right up, deliver them from captivity and from the forces of this world. And I pray, Father, that if there be any need, spiritual, financial, whatever it is, may you supply those needs, may you heal your people. We read in this story, Lord, Father, how even Epaphrodite was almost dying, but Lord, you healed him, and the church rejoiced to see him coming back. If there be someone who is sick in church, may you heal them, Father, also, so that it will be our joy to see them coming to serve you in fullness of health. Father, I pray, that will help us to forget all the things that are past and press to the mark of the high calling. I remember the testimony that I heard when I was just praying by the prison there of Paul. And I had a desire, and I had about two, three desires that I had. All of them were supplied before I even reached Thessalonica. Father, showing that you are still the same. Though there may not be the physical link of your power there, but the scriptural link was there, Lord Father, to remind us that the God of the Bible is still alive. Bless your people as you end this service. After starting this, will you enrich them? And uh, Father, when they shall, if we happen to be able to stream that all night prayer meeting, just a few minutes from now, may you be with us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, saints. Um, as I said, I'll be ministering in all night prayer meeting um, in South Africa, uh, Regent's Park. Maybe we'll be able to stream it. If we don't stream it, we'll stream it later. But I believe we are enjoying. And my next uh, trip broadcast will be on the my visit to Pompeii. I visited Pompeii. Uh, there's a lot of findings that will be exciting for you. When the prophet says that as it was in the last day of Pompeii, it will be worse for Los Angeles. So I'm going to preach on the oncoming judgments as I show my visit to the city of Pompeii that was buried by volcanic ash. I believe you, you are interested in this, this um, working in Bible land. It makes the Bible new, you know. We did that on Philippi, on um, the Book of Romans, Thessalonians. We did, I went to Co Corinth also in Eropecas. We did on the church edges, we're doing them in every side, Laodicea. If you have missed any of those things, visit. But our next will be the visit to Pompeii. Then later I'll broadcast on the visit 
to uh, millimeters where Paul called the elders. God bless you. Till we meet again. Amen. Chaira kukara uchiwara uchirapka kure ne kure yewe kamuchira upore sorwako kamuchira yewe wachaira kukara uchiwara uchirapka kure ne kure yati kamuchira upore sorwako yati hama yangu tenda chete yewe hama yangu tenda chete wana hama yangu tenda chete. Tend